Welcome to today's 3D print Mega print episode. Oh yeah! <laughs> we got some Mega prints today! <laughs> First, I did a whole bunch of nose cones. I finally got the a e 10 tweaked so I could do my three nose cones at a time. It does one, then the second one, and the third one. So I printed up a whole bunch of black nose cones. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna make a, an army, you know, a, a little arsenal. I will take over the world with 3D printed missiles. I don't know how to animate the carnivorous man-eating bullets called Bonsai Bill, so I'll just use missiles. No big deal. <laughs> so that's using that dirt cheap PLA that I got off of Amazon. It's like uh, I think it's $11.99 a kilogram. I'll post a link down below. It's it's stupid cheap. Um, what's cool though, crank up the speed 200% and you get a matte finish instead of a glossy finish. And just as strong, not, it's not weaker. It doesn't do anything. It's, that's stupid strong. But instead of the glossy finish, you get a matte finish. So I might run these all at high speed to get that matte finish. I like that. It's cool. You guys already saw all this, but I'm going to give you a better detailed view. The little cute octopus printed on the Ender 2. And then the big octopus eating the cute octopus. <laughs> I love this one. This one, this is great. The guy who made this did such a good job. He even put the mouth on there. He's about to rom 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 that octopus. <laughs> You're smiling too much. This thing is great. This was printed on the ANET E10. I'm telling you, that thing is an impressive printer. It's not perfect. It's no CR10. It's no Ender 2. But it is a hell of a mid-step for a, a modestly sized printer with a gigantic build volume relative to its price it's very cool because it will do 200 across 270 deep and 300 tall which is significantly bigger than your typical i3 printer i really like the a 10 it's got issues and you got to fix those issues but they're worth it the the, the core is good it's just quality control is crap <laughs> typical a net They'll work on it. They'll fix it. If they want to keep staying in business and selling good printers, they'll they'll get the quality control under control. I also reprinted the lithovane on the um, on the Ender 2, and it came out significantly better. Uh, that's not really working, is it? Kind of. No, it's not really working. I really need to put that behind the light. But um, it came out um, much better quality. The, yeah, I can actually read some of the words on it. So I'm very, very pleased by that. Long print. These prints take a long time, but they're very cool looking. Now i got to do, um, uh, even though he already did it, I don't care. I want one of those lions that RC Life On did. That, that lion came out so, oh, I want that lion. <laughs> it just looked cool. If you haven't seen that, do a search on RC Life On's channel for his um, lithophane where he did the... Um, he also did a lampshade, which is awesome, but the lion just came out amazing. I love the lion. Um, I got another um, all-in-one tail cone made up. This is in Polymaker PLA. Not bad. It's pretty cool. I like it. It's a matte white. I like that. <coughs> all one piece. Then you just thread your thing on the end here. Good to go. Um, new print. You guys are gonna like this. Made another nose cone in, um, I think it's Esun. Yeah, Esun's blue pet G. Oh man, that came out cool. Tolerances are good. One thing I noticed is that it's flexible, so I can squeeze it, and I could actually hear the three perimeter separating inside. The layer bonding is good. But, um, and you can, you can't even see the layer lines barely. You gotta really, really look close to see those layer lines. The Ender 2 is phenomenal, phenomenal. Um, apparently they got nine of them returned on Amazon. I'm trying to negotiate a deal to buy all nine from them. Um, I'm hoping they'll make a deal with me. And, um, because even if only half of them work, I'd be happy with that. These printers are, are phenomenal. Uh, I'm gonna just make a farm of these things and crank out parts. But the Petchy came out very nice. Petchy's a pain in the ass. It's it's 
it's hard to get that first layer to stick right and it has to stick right because it it pops off the bed like nothing when i went to go get the printer i just picked it up it didn't even go crack and pop off it was just off came right off so i might have to add a brim but um this is not an unattended print you can't hit and go and walk away you've got to sit there and make sure that first layer attaches once that first layer attaches you're good you can walk away but that first layer has to attach but um beautiful that is a beautiful nose cone if i can get um more of this petchy cheaply i'm going to do more more rocket parts and petchy i'm definitely going to do an entire kit including this part here in petchy i don't know how i know petchy doesn't like overhang so i don't know how it's going to handle this since it prints like that but we'll see i want to try because this is very pretty i mean that's that's one of the prettiest nose cones i've ever made it's just a beautiful beautiful nose cone I wonder if you can see inside there. Let's see how pretty this is. Oh yeah, there we go. Look at that. That is a beautiful nose cone. I really like that. That's nice. Okay, and of course, the octopus. That actually is the supersized cute octopus. Well, supersized for an ender. It's actually supposed to be about this big. So that's actually supersized on the ender. But you remember the octopus eating the octopus and you remember the original white one I printed uh, I supersized them I happened to have this color loaded and I said screw it I'm just going to print them in pink and it came out cool <laughs> god this octopus looks awesome it came out perfect no holes no issues looks beautiful on the CR10 of course God, I love that printer. Nothing short of a G-Max can make things like this. That, that's incredible. To get this kind of quality, you go straight from CR10 to G-Max. There's nothing in between. The, the CR10 is just amazing. Very, very cool. Beautiful bottom layer, as usual. This one here took... 43 hours to print. I marked it this time. <laughs> um, I didn't mark them all though, so I gotta start doing that. I'm trying to get in the habit of writing a sharpie on the bottom of how many hours it took to print. And um, I'll have time lapse of this. I'm pretty. Yeah, I think I do have time lapse of this coming up if it's not already up. Um, so yeah, that's my killer octopus. Don't make me angry. I'll send the octopus after you. Yeah. And then I found another dragon. So first I printed the dragon on the Ender 2, of course. I do everything on the Ender 2 first because it's fast, small, convenient. I have multiple of them, and it does an incredible job. <laughs> but um, this is getting CR10 mega-sized, and it's going to get CR10 mega-sized in a new filament I got. Someone just posted one of the rose vases, and I believe an Adelinda in this filament. I'll post a link below for this. Another silk filament from a different company, like the Ultra PLAs from 3D Solutech. Except this one's gold. Yeah. Oh yeah. That dragon's getting supersized in the gold. That's gonna be cool. And this is by CC3ID. Chinese. Yeah, but it was cheap. It was like $22, $24 a kilogram. It wasn't expensive at all. He told me where to get it. I was like, oh yeah, I found it. So, here's a little dragon. And as usual, look at the finish on that. It's, like, perfect. <laughs> it really is, pretty much, perfect. It is so smooth, it feels like a, a mass-produced part. It's so incredibly smooth. And also, by uh, from now on, I always print these little ones on the Ender 2, because the number one, the Ender 2 does a perfect job, no questions, hands down, perfect. So if there's any flaws, I know that's where I need to make corrections in the bigger ones. So for example, you can see slight holes in the feet, so that means I'm going to need infill for the feet when I supersize it. I'm going to need a little infill at the tops of his haunches here. I'm going to need, I see a slight, it's no holes, but I see a discoloration like it was struggling right here at the top of his back. So I'll make sure I have infill there. And of course the top of his head will need infill. But very little. Now supersize it, these will become holes. 
So then now I know where I need to add infill. The tail, the feet, so infill for the first that far. Add a little more infill here at the top of the haunches. Um, add a little infill at the top of the back here and, and put infill in the head. So now I know where I need infill and where I can get away with no infill. Everything else can print without infill to print fine. But this is completely without infill. This is totally empty. But what a beautiful little dragon. I think this is a MakerBot um, thing. It's got the MakerBot logo on the bottom. So I'm assuming some MakerBot made this. But it's a very pretty little dragon. So he is going to get super size on the CR10 probably two weeks from now because I got a couple other prints queued up. But he's going to get super sized in that gold silk PLA. That's going to be very pretty. Alrighty. Do I have anything else to show you before I show you the piece de resistance? The awesome, the amazing. Oh yes, I almost forgot. I have another ANET E10 print. You're not going to believe this printed on an ANET E10. <laughs> it, it came out so perfect. It's ridiculous. If you're paying attention to my channel, you've already saw the time lapse of this. There's a guy who made a light up owl. It's called the Smiling Owl. And someone else remixed it with a hole in the back so that you can use it as a potter, a plant potter. So I printed that. I got this PLA. Um, you can get it from Walmart and you can get it online. Experland, I think. I'll have links for it. Um, $15 a kilogram. Very affordable. And it's a natural clear PLA. But a lot of the natural clear PLAs have a yellowish color, which I do not like. This one is clear, clear. You know, it's not see-through, obviously. It's you know, it's got too many layers for that. But it's clear, clear. There's no yellow tint to it. So I am going to spray coat this with a um, a UV clear coat, a UV protective clear coat, since PLA doesn't like UV. And I'm also thinking about putting a couple of little solar panels on the back here with a couple of little LEDs so it'll glow at night. This is the Smiling Owl Planter. I am hard pressed to find one single flaw or deviation anywhere in this print. I still can't believe that ANET E10 did this. And this thing is big. It's huge. I mean, this thing's 8 inches across. It's perfect. I mean, it really is perfect very little ringing and ghosting. It has some, and it has some of what I would call salmoning. It's weird. Um, this printer has that for some reason. The other ones don't, but it's very subtle. I mean, you got to look for it. The fact that I was reading up on it with the TiVo Little Monsters, the only reason I even know it was there, and the only reason I even noticed it. But um, no fill problems, no layer deviations, no shifts, no noise anywhere. Um, it started to peel up a little bit here, but it's only because um, the bed level wasn't perfect, so it peeled up a little bit here, but it, it stayed down fine. The print and Z work did its job. This thing is amazing! This came off the ANA E10! I'm really glad I got that printer, because it, it's, a, it's a good addition to my arsenal for getting all my prints done. You know, when, I mean, this is a, a goofy, cool, friendly print that I don't want to super mega size it on the CR10, and it's not really useful on the Ender 2 or the other printers. But, um, you know, it's the kind of thing where, okay, I'm not using that for doing anything, so what the hell, I'll stick that on it. And if it works, it works, if it doesn't, it doesn't. It's no big deal. It's not taking away from any of my um, production capability. And the result is stunning. I mean, it really is cool. Can you see through it? Oh, yeah. It's all clear. So this ought to look pretty cool. Lit up from underneath. Put a couple of LEDs in there, I bet you that'll light up pretty nice at night. A couple of dollar store LEDs, and just put the LEDs in the bottom, just drill a little hole, stick them in there, and then have the solar panels sit here on the ground on his feet so they charge up during the day. And I think that would look cool. So I'm going to spray this with a UV clear coat and put it outside and plant something in it, because so I think that's cool. Alrighty, is that everything? I got a bunch of other nose cones. So, oh, yeah, I printed my first shoe. One thing I've really been wanting to do with a 3D printer is to print my own pair of shoes. This is just like a goofy slipper I found, but it was the simplest one that looked like I could resize without a problem. And it worked. Apparently he used some physics formula algorithm to generate this pattern on the shoe. Um, of course, it's I'm guessing it's a, a woman's shoe because the heel in the back was very narrow. I, I sized it correctly and my foot was able to fit in here but not here, so I just took a heat gun to it until it was soft and spread it out. 
It was just a proof of concept to see whether I could print a shoe large enough to fit my foot in. And this has got tons of wasted space inside of it, so yes I can. So now the trick is to, um, to model my own shoe. And the other purpose of this is now I have dimensions. I know I need the back of the shoe to be this wide. I know I need the front of the shoe to be this wide. I know I need the inside of the shoe to be this tall because this fits. It doesn't fit right, but it fits enough that I can take measurements from it and try my hand at either modifying or making my own shoe. Because I, and out of TPU, of course, PLA is just because it's cheap. You know, this cost me two bucks to make. If I'd have made this out of TPU, it would have cost like $15. So, um,. Well, not maybe quite that much. Fifteen dollars a pair. So I'll do them out of PLA first, and once I get one that works right, then I'll do it out of TPU. And what I'm hoping is that because I'm 3D printing it, I can make the bottom of the shoe as thick as I want. So I can have as much shock absorption and cushioning as, as I want. Because the problem I'm having is that I wear shoes out so fast. So if I could print my own pair of shoes and simply double and triple the amount of material on the bottom, I can make the shoe last longer before it starts to give out and not provide me the support I need. Plus, screw it. It'd just be freaking cool to print my own pair of shoes. <laughs> Who wouldn't want to print their own pair of shoes just to say, yeah, I made those at home on my printer. That's cool. That's the wonder of 3D printing. It's, it's, it never ceases to amaze me the things you can do. So, you guys remember Voyager. Okay. The Starship Voyager. This was printed on the Ender 2 in two pieces, split right here. So this part was printed like that, and this part was printed like that. I have a whole video on how to do that. The, um, the Starship video I did with the Serac class Vulcan Starship is the exact same procedure. Just make sure you run it through NetPad first. Actually, I think I posted this. Yeah, this is posted on um, Thingiverse. So, of course, my CR-10s were screaming at me. They were saying, we want to print a Mega Starship. <laughs> this is a lean back video. You ready for this? <laughs> Look at the scale difference. Here's the little one. <laughs> and here's the CR-10 one. Oh my god, the, the amount of details that have appeared because it's printing so large that it can actually get those details is incredible. There's the little dish on the front. Look at that. It actually printed that separate little dish. Look at all the details in here. All the little lines of the hull. Everything. The windows in the front of these sections here are the bridges. The little ship on the bottom actually has depth now. The windows here. I mean, look, yep, it's pretty fine. Look at that. Annoyingly, there's this shift here. At first, I thought the printer screwed up. I think that's in the model. Because on a different printer, on a differently sliced file, the, um, the one I printed on here has the exact same shift. Just not as big, because obviously the model's not as big. As I scaled the model up, the shift scaled up. And it's in precisely the exact same location. So that's in the model, not my printer. Torpedo launchers. The navigation array actually has the little scalloping lines in it that are supposed to be there. That you couldn't see on the small one because it was below the threshold of a 0.4 millimeter, 0.4 millimeter nozzle on this printer. All the windows... All the, look, look along here. This was nothing in the other model, but on here, you have all those details inside that opening that simply don't exist on the smaller model. It's just a, a slight groove on the smaller model. There's like nothing in there. But on this one, all those details pop out. Look at that. That's amazing. The only place I have infill is right here. The section here to support the dish since it's curving inward that would not print right without support so there's infill in there to support that also when I ran it through netfab that little hole went away on the bottom that's good the little hole that you see on this one a little hole there so that was just a glitch in the model and netfab took care of that look at all these windows and ports 
This model really is stunning. The number of the and look, you can see instead of being a solid chunk, the impulse engines actually have veins. There's, there's actually details there, the inlets up front. The details are stunning. I really wish I had the skill to remodel this to have um, um to maybe even have these print separately and you put a pin through here so these can actually rotate I think that would be cool as hell to do that but that's beyond my skill level right now maybe one day the shuttle bay has all of its details windows in the back there all the engine details all the nacelle details even little navigation lights on top here all the insets the little lines here all those details incredible really a beautiful model the amount of details really is pretty impressive I love this model I love this ship it's a beautiful ship it's one of the more elegantly designed ships it's very aquatic like it's very um dolphinish it's a, it's just a, a very elegant pretty ship it looks like it looks like it would slip through space here's the the bridge deck and this gray is beautiful it's not consistent though the color shifts throughout the filament you can see the gradient of color shifting although that might be due to speed speed at which it printed now here's something interesting um, the CR-10 has an issue with ghosting and ringing and um, on your normal typical prints stuff like that stuff like this you're, you're never going to notice it. I mean, things things that are very organic, like this, you just you you're never going to see that ghosting and ringing. It's a non-issue. But even on something like this, all this detail, no problem. It printed fine, very because because it's all smooth, organic shapes, all nice curves and rounds. But as soon as you start printing hard details right angle micro details windows and stuff like that and little tiny surface features the ringing becomes bad it's a it's a, no, okay it's not bad as in the printer's doing a bad job it's bad relative to the amount of detail available in the model it begins to hurt those details in the model because like for example here see if you look closely you can see every single window has a ringing after it on this one here it's the bottom so down now, this side of the window is clean, this side of the window has the ghost ringing afterwards. And that's annoying. Um, I got rid of most of it by simply, I turned jerk down to 2, and I turned the speed down to 50%, so roughly 20 millimeters a second. It took forever to print this. I mean, it, it took a very long time. Uh, this um, top section here took three days. Um, two and a half days, roughly. Because all of, most of today all of yesterday and most of this, so about I guess about 48 hours total to print this section and then this section took me like three days but that's because I had to try four times <laughs> um, I showed you in my other video you can see it very cleanly where I changed speeds so you can see this section here how it has more noise where here it's nice and smooth here it's nice and smooth but you got a whole bunch of noise in here and that's the ringing and ghosting and all I did was change it from 50% to 60% so of course I went right back down to 50%. Like it wasn't worth the speed increase to have all that noise. I'd rather wait an extra day and have a beautifully clean model. And it was worth it. It was worth the wait. Uh, maybe a G-Max could do this at 60 millimeters a second and not have that problem. Well, give me $3,000 and I'll buy a G-Max. <laughs> Until then, I'll take three times longer and get just as beautiful a model with my $400 CR-10. Thank you. <laughs> Every day, all day, no questions asked. It's, it's amazing. This model is gorgeous. Uh, I might even go to the effort of doing little tiny bits of paint on this. Um, not much. You know, maybe just the, the deflector dish and the nacelle. Just add a little blue and red that it uses. Just a little bit. Just a touch. So I, I suck at painting. Let's just be honest with that. Uh, you're going to love the time lapse where the support for this fell down. And so I grabbed a box and put glue on both sides and taped it to the model so it could start printing the support again. <laughs> worked. It held. It worked. It got the, the support rebuilt and it continued printing. So you, you'll love that in the time lapse. <laughs> but there you go. That is the mega mega print of the week. That is my piece de resistance of my printing this week. The beautiful Starship Voyager. 
supersized. How big is this? It's, it's over two feet. It's got to be. Huh. Two foot on the nose. <laughs> on the nose. Two feet. This is 24 inches long. That is a big ship. That's a very, very big ship. And it only cost me... Actually, I still got maybe a quarter of the roll left plus the failures. Now I have a couple of these. <laughs> and, you know, here's another one. Oh, yeah, okay. So there's three of those. So that's what, 15 bucks to print this? Hello. You can't beat that with a 10 foot stick. $15. And you have a two foot long, ridiculously detailed Starship Voyager. Now, pause this. Go get the um, theme song for Voyager. I'll wait. Got the theme song for Voyager? Go ahead and hit play. Yeah, you know you'll want to. Here comes your Starship Voyager. <laughs> that thing is amazing. Uh, that's... I love that. Oh, yeah. Very cool. Alright, I have plans. Um, I'm going to keep making prints, of course. Obviously, I love making prints. It's, it's, it's an addiction. But it's getting harder to find nice big projects. I got a couple more starships I want to print. I got a couple more ideas for rockets I want to print. I got that big dragon I want to print. I desperately want to print Moon City. I got my second roll of... Um, I want to make sure it comes out nice. I'm going to use eSun PLA Pro to do it. It's my go-to for if, uh, if I'm unsure. And I really want to make sure it works. eSun PLA Pro. So I only had one box of warm white left, so I bought another box of warm white because it's going to take more than a kilogram. It's going to take 1.6 kilograms of plastic to print the thing. <laughs> it's big. It's The slicer is telling me 107 hours. And because of my jerk and acceleration setting differences, that's usually off by about 20%. So I'm expecting a 120 hour print. I am expecting a four plus day print. Uh, almost five days. Yeah. That's... That's going to be fun, because uh, if it fails, I'm going to cry. Because <laughs> not for the, the money, but for the time. Could you imagine getting 90 hours into a 120-hour print and having it fail? <sighs> I would have a heart attack. But um, I got a couple of things that I'm working on. I, ha I found extensions for the steppers and the limit switches. Turns out they're JST balance charge connectors. I hope. So I have some of them coming in tomorrow. And I also bought some open builds T-slot rails or V-slot rails because I have a project I'm going to be working on. My plan is to turn the CR-10 into an ender. What I mean by that is that I'm going to make the CR-10 an all-in-one base like the ender is. So I'm going to I think I got I think I got clip limit I think I got 2080. I'm pretty sure it ordered 2080. So I'm going to make another base frame for the CR10, the same size as its current bottom, the four pieces that make the bottom, the two 400 and the two 470 millimeter pieces that make the bottom of the printer. I'm going to duplicate that, but in much thicker rail, taller, and bolt that onto the printer so that the printer will sit 80 millimeters higher up off the ground. By doing that, I will then get a piece of you know, acrylic or plexiglass and slide it right into the rail at the top, the, the printer's actual rail, so that um, nothing from the printer can fall inside. And then in the bottom slot, I will slide in a piece of plywood. And that will give me like a roughly 70 millimeter opening between the clear plastic and the plywood. And I'm going to put, I'm going to get rid of the control box altogether. And I'm going to put all the electronics for the printer, including a Raspberry Pi for not to print. Yeah, I'm gonna, I got one. I got one. I'm going to try it, play with it, see how it works. And I'm going to build all of that into the bottom of the printer. So there will be no control box. It will be like an Ender 2. The only thing popping out of the printer will be the power cord. And of course the cables going to the, um, the, the gantry. The extruder and the um, X motor. Um, so that's what the extensions are for. So that it don't have enough reach 
Um, and then the printer will take up, it'll take up that much less space on the desk. Because all that will be gone. It'll be inside underneath. That'll also allow me to um, do some nice cooling. I'll be able to put like a 60 millimeter fan on the front right and then uh, another one on the back left and have a nice flow of air coming through the whole thing to keep everything cool. I'll filter it of course. And um, go from there. I, uh, I want to experiment with that. I want to try it. Um, if it works out, I'll do a bulk order of, of extrusion on eBay from a seller who will custom cut it to other things I need. And uh, hopefully I can just use a standard metal hacksaw to cut this stuff because it came in fixed lengths, 500 millimeters. So i got to cut it all down. And i got to figure out how I'm going to access the control panel. Do I want to have the control panel sitting there underneath the bed so I can only get to it when the bed is back? I don't know. Um, I might have it. I might have a section, the control panel not visible at all, you know, except through the plexiglass, and then a section of the extrusion will slide out. So I would need to get extensions for that ribbon cable for the um, um, the LCD panels so that I can slide that out, access the controls, and push it back in. Um, that'll make it very convenient so that um, everything will be inside, everything will be spread out where it can air out and be cool, and um, go from there, see how it works out. Um, if it works, if it looks nice, if it works nice, if I like it, I'll do that to the ANET E10 and the other CR10. And that way they'll fit on the table a lot better. I'll just put the filament on top, like the uh, Enders do. I actually bought five more of these filament holders from Hicktop, five bucks a piece. Because I like the fact that they're straight up instead of tilted. I'll put the filament right on top of the gantry, the tower, because the printers are more than rigid enough that the mass of the filament doesn't mean nothing. When your printer's that stiff, that, that doesn't mean nothing, it doesn't do anything. Um, the bed is what's moving back and forth this way which is not going to affect the filament and the um, it's more than stiff enough this way that the the low mass of the X going back and forth just isn't going to do anything you know I don't print fast like I do on the Ender 2's I run the I run the CR 10's at 30 or 40 millimeters a second max I just you, you get too much noise if you run them fast so if you if you want that luscious beautiful quality you just gotta run it slow um, someone said TL smoothers might work for the um, the CR10 stepper drivers, so I might try that because they're cheap. They're like nine bucks. They're not a lot of money, so I might get two of those and try them. Although I think somebody said you need 24 volts for those things. I don't know. I gotta confirm that because I'm pretty sure the CR10 is 12 volts, not 24. And um, we'll go from there. But that is a long-term project. I don't know how long it's gonna take. I don't know how quickly I can do it. So don't like you know go crazy if it's not done next weekend because it probably won't be. <laughs> But um, it takes up a lot of space. I'd like to make the CR10s take up less space. I would like to be able to just plop them down, plug in power, be done. And um, the only thing I want on the outside is a little slide-out panel to access the, uh, the screen, knob, and um, and the SD card slot, which will be a full-size SD card, of course, you know, with the little adapters that I bought. And I'll have a full bomb put together links for the bio stuff if it works. I don't want you guys buying this crap if it doesn't work. You know, that would be immoral to say, hey, go buy all this stuff. Yeah, 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 I'm going to make a couple dollars of affiliate links and then it doesn't work. <laughs> so I'll wait to provide those links until I make sure it works so that I don't, you know, say you guys a bill of sale of garbage. And um, we'll go from there. I also plan to experiment with the dial indicator. I got a, a nice little digital one, it was like $22, it wasn't that much, so I was like, screw it. I'm probably not really going to use it long term because I've gotten pretty good at leveling the bed by eye, but it might come in handy at quantifying my eye level, perfect level, after I've done it, so that I could then go back to it without having to eyeball it again. So get it perfect the way I like it, then put this on there, and see what it actually is. And um, this is the meter dial indicator um, because uh, there are some filaments where you have to change that like pet G you can't squish pet G as much as you do um, PLA it can't tolerate it it doesn't tolerate being squished as much and I think that was my problem with the polybutylene ethyl phthalate I think that was the problem with that one as well 
um, too much squish. It didn't like it. Once it got to the spiral, it was fine, but it didn't like the. I think I had too much squish between layers. I think I need, actually need to reduce the extrusion multiplier for the multiple layers and increase the extrusion multiplier for the vase. I think that would like that. Or my printer just wasn't going hot enough to print that material correctly, which I think is what the case is. I think that that material is like an ABS ASA material, and you just you really need an enclosure, a hot bed, an all metal hot end. You, I think you really just need that to print those materials. And um, anything else? I I'll post a link, even though they go in and out of sale often. Because so far it's working perfectly on the Ender 2. I still have the right size coming in. I got, I finally found these springs. The, um, the flattened springs that the CR-10 uses. Slightly stronger, because they're too weak. I like stiffer springs, so it'll hold the bed level better. Uh, the weaker spring applies less pressure to the knob, so the knob can dance. It's, it works. My Enders have stopped dancing. And they don't dance anymore. Um, they, these are 10 millimeters, so they're bigger around. I also got 8 millimeter, but these are medium strength, and they are way too stiff. Way, way too stiff. I, I can barely squeeze them all with my fingers, and I think that's too much. I think that'll, that'll bend and warp stuff on the printer. So I'll stick with the, apparently they come in four strengths. You have extra light, light, medium, and heavy. The CR-10 uses extra light, so I'm going to be switching to light. And that'll make it a little stiffer. I haven't had a problem with the CR-10 dancing. It, I, I don't lose my bed level on the CR-10. I've done print after print, and I haven't had to mess with the bed level, so it's probably okay. But all my other printers, I want to use the CR-10 style springs just because they're so much better. Because they are flat. Just look at your CR-10 springs, and you'll see what I'm talking about immediately. Um, you know, let me get, a, let me get you close up. Uh, I realize a lot of you don't have the CR-10. What are you waiting for? There's a link right there. Go get a CR-10. Are you crazy? <laughs> but anyway, the CR, your, your typical printer uses springs like this. Get your normal round spring. And the problem is, first of all, they don't sit flat on top because the top isn't flat. Okay. But also, when you squish them, they tend to want to push out the sides. They tend to want to push this way, especially as you squish them more. See how it curves? Okay? That means your bed level dances around. So as that curve moves, your bed level's changing, and that can make your bed level un inconsistent. Like you'll get it level, it'll be pretty fine, then you hit print again, and it's not fine anymore, and you got to tweak it a little bit. I had the same problem on the um, the one house duplicators. Now the way we fix this on the one house duplicators is by using spring cups. I designed the spring cup to almost completely enclose the spring when it was compressed the necessary amount for the bed level. So you can't close it all the way, because otherwise you might com com compress it down and hit the top of the spring cup, and then you're not getting any spring action anymore. And uh, But that keeps the springs from moving side to side, which really helps with uh, a good bed level. But these springs are different. They are flat cut. They're not round. See that? And this is what the CR-10 uses, and the CR-10 holds a very good bed level. You can see the top is nice and flat, and they are... Basically, the, the spring is a rectangle that's spun into a spring instead of a cylinder that's spun into a spring. So if you were to cut this spring right here and look at the cross section, it'd be a cylinder. It'd be round, like filament, actually. While if you were to cut this and look at the cross section, it would look like squished filament. So instead of being round like this, it's squished square like this. And what that does is that gives you great resistance to being pushed sideways. The spring doesn't want to go sideways. It wants to self-center, especially if you use, this is a 10 millimeter. I have eight millimeter ones coming in. The eight millimeter ones are perfect for the bolts. That's what the printer uses. But the 10 millimeter ones give me a little more strength. So I might switch to the 10 millimeter and, and stick with the 10 millimeter on the other printers. I'm gonna leave the CR-10s alone, they're fine. But um, these work great on the Ender 2s with the Print and Z. Um, if you were to use glass of any thickness, these might not work because they're pretty close to full compression on me, which is what you want because that makes the knob nice and tight. So that, I mean, I actually have to take two fingers sometimes to turn the knob because it's too tight to do it with one finger, which is good because that means as the printer jiggles around and as you hack at that print bed to get your print off, it doesn't cause... I've, I've, I've taken this printer. I couldn't figure it out. It's such a nice printer. Why does the bed level keep getting lost on me? 
And so I sat here and I just did this. And I watched the knob spin on its own. As I jiggled the print bed like this, I watched the knob spin on its own. I was like, that's what's happening. Every time I go at this thing with a scraper to get my print off, I'm jiggling it, and the, the knobs are loosening, which is making the bed come up, and I'm getting bad bed level again. So by using these, come on, by using these stronger, flatter springs like the CR10 uses, I will get less tendency for these to wobble side to side, and by pushing more, I get more tension on these knobs. So they're tighter, literally. You, you go to turn them. The original ones, you could take a single finger going, eat, 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 and you could turn them. And um, for this little print bed, that's bad. You want those knobs to be tight so that they stay put and they don't loosen on their own. These work perfectly, and they're not expensive. There's like five to eight bucks for ten of them. So I'll post links to that. They come in and out of stock all the time, so you just gotta keep checking. But the search term I finally figured out was rectangular compression spring. When I did a search for rectangular compression spring, then I got these. Um, this is something I just thought was cool. It's a random who cares type thing, but it's neat. At work, I work at Papa John's Pizza, they had um, in the drawer, they had a whole crap ton of steel 1943 wheat pennies. I'm like, cool, bought them all. There's like 40 of them. I was like, that's just neat. They're worthless. I don't care. They just look cool as hell. The fact that it's a penny, a zinc coated steel penny. It's not made of copper or anything like that. That's just cool. I like dumb things like that. These are working nice. I like these little cases. You can get these at Dollar Tree. One dollar a piece. Hello. If you need this kind of thing, go grab them because Dollar Tree is the kind of place where this kind of stuff isn't kept in stock. You know, they'll keep it until it sells out. Sometimes they'll keep it. You know, the Jot is a brand that they. I think that's one of their brands because a lot of stuff there is labeled Jot. But a lot of the times they'll get stuff like this, and then once it's gone, that's it. It's gone forever, and you never see it again. But I, I like them because they're stackable. So you can stack them together and put them on a the shelf. It's cool. Um, if you decide to print these pens, they're absolutely amazing. I, 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 I guess I should show you these. <laughs> I showed them in another video. This one's the dirty one. The other one that's out in the car I use it for delivering is much, much cleaner. I'm going to try printing one of these in PETG. This would look just baller as shit in this blue PETG. Oh, that would be so cool. I'm going to have to put a really big multi-layer brim on it though because I don't think the PETG is going to stay put long enough to print the pen. It doesn't stick like the PLA does. Um, so I'm going to have to figure out how to make it stick because that would look so cool in the PETG. And to the viewer who made me the rocket one, oh yeah, I'm going to print that. <laughs> um, that's definitely going to get printed. That's just cool. And I might actually be able to make that fly. I think that, I'll have to check and see if that hole in there is big enough. I might have to scale it up a tiny bit to make it, because I need a 6 millimeter hole for the Micromax rocket motors, and i got to make sure it's under, um, I think 20 grams is my max liftoff weight, so i got to make sure it's under 20 grams for those motors. And um, if you, the pens for them, um, you get either order the crystal pens that he suggests off um, um, Amazon, or... I'll have a link to the crystal pens on Amazon in case you don't have a Dollar Tree near you, or just go to Dollar Tree and get the Bic Round Stick Extra Life. They fit. Okay. The only thing I had to do was put a knife in the tip here and just you know just open the tip up a little bit so it would get in there and compression fit in there and it fit fine. So yeah, ten cents a piece. And this is what a, a nickel's worth of plastic. It's like nothing. It's, it, even if you use the most expensive plastic available, it's still nothing. It's it's so little plastic to make that. And it just looks amazing. And this printed on the Ender 2. I'm going to do a time lapse of this because so people aren't going to believe this. It printed standing up like this. I printed it point down, standing up, and it printed like that on the Ender 2. I'm telling you, if you're new to 3D printers, the Ender 2 is the perfect starter printer because it's extremely reliable, extremely consistent, very easy to assemble, and the print results are phenomenal. And you can print reasonably large things with the Ender 2. And you can print tall things with the Ender 2. Because it will go 225 millimeters. 
So it's got a reasonable build volume of roughly 6 by 6 by 9 inches. And the resolution, the details that you can extract from the printer are nothing short of spectacular. This came off the Ender 2. This Voyager came off the Ender 2. This pen came off the Ender 2. And the cleanliness of the prints, this, smooth as a baby's bottom, nose cone, came off the freaking Ender 2. <laughs> I have three of them. I plan to own many more. They are amazing. And I was not sent one. I bought these. Nobody sent me one of these. Um, they're just cool printers. And the cool thing is, because they are so good, because the printer is so absolutely phenomenal, even after you get an Ender 2, you're going to go buy an Ender 2. It's $163 on GearBest. It's a no-brainer decision. Go buy one. It's a no-brainer because even if you decide you don't like 3D printing, you're only out $163, not out $400, or $500, or $600. It's a throwaway decision if you have any... If you're considering 3D printing, it's 20 bucks more than the sale price of an ANET A8, and it blows an ANET A8's ass out of the water. <laughs> I don't have an ANET A8. I do have a link for an ANA 8 below if you want one for 140 bucks. An ANA 8 has a purpose. If you're a tinkerer, if you love tinkering, go buy an ANA 8 because you're going to be tinkering. <laughs> but hey, for some people, that's what they like. Some people don't want an Ender 2 or a CR10 because there's nothing to do. These printers need nothing. Nothing. You don't have to do a thing to the Ender 2. Nothing. You, there's not a single modification you need to print out for that printer. The only modifications I would make to an Ender 2, even the fans are quiet. You don't even have to replace the fans. They're already quiet. The only modifications I would make to an Ender 2 are to replace the springs with the better springs and put a Print and Z print surface on it. That's it. You don't need any other modifications for the Ender 2. The CR10, the only modifications you need are my Essentials modification that I showed you to download. That's all you need. It doesn't need anything else. The printers are that good out of the box. You don't need any other modifications. For a lot of people, that's boring. For a lot of people, the hacking, the tinkering, the printing parts, the experimenting, that's the fun. Those are the people like the, um, the, the VR guy. You know, he loves putting the LED lights on it with the dimmer and putting the octopi on it and putting the camera on it. That's the fun to them, is doing all that. And if the printers already had all that, it wouldn't be as fun to some of them. Some don't care, they'll go either way. So if you like that kind of thing, get an A8. But if you're looking at A8 budget, and you want a virtually turnkey printer that will give you this kind of print results absolutely I, I'm not abusing the word when I say perfect it's as close to perfect as FDM is gonna get <laughs> at a $200 price point so you go to Gearbest and you get it for 163 bucks here's the advantage if you decide you like 3D printing you now go and buy a CR10 and this will be your crack fill <laughs> <laughs> because there's a problem with the CR10. There's a very big problem with the CR10. Big. Get it? Big? <laughs> 43 hours. 80 plus hours. Okay? That's the problem with a CR10. You don't buy a CR10 unless you make it big, because that's the fun of a CR10. That's what makes a CR10. <laughs> you can make stuff big. Well, the problem is, after about 12 hours, you start going through withdrawal. <laughs> because now your printer is only a quarter of the way into a giant print, and I want to print something. <laughs> so the Ender 2 fills that role. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you can do long prints. I think this was like an 11-hour print on the Ender 2, and this was like a 12-hour a, a print. A little thing, but even that's relatively short. That's a big project. Uh, but you know, something like this, the pen, you know, it was three and a half hours, and it was done. You know, something like this, you know, two and a half hours, three hours, it was done. Okay, because this is cranked up at 200%, and the quality is still phenomenal. I mean, still better than any other printer in this room. At 200%. Um, you know, these nose cones take eight hours. The symbol vase took, you know, an hour and a half, two hours. You know, the Marvin takes 22 minutes. You know, it's it's a quick printer, and you can turn up the speed. Um, but it also takes a little space. You can sit on the desk right next to you because it's so quiet. Um, it's just, it's a good companion to the CR-10 because it allows you to get your fix 
while you're waiting for your 43 hour print to finish. <laughs> and when you get an idea and you want to try something out, you throw it on the Ender 2 first because it'll finish it faster. So I printed my little dragon on the Ender 2 first and then I'll sick it. If I like what I see, then I'll sick it on the CR10 where I know it's going to take a lot longer. Same thing here. You know, I printed out the Voyager on the Ender first, decided, oh my god, I freaking love this. Then I invested the 40 bucks in filament because I bought two rolls just in case. I didn't need two rolls, but so call it $22. But, you know, 40 bucks in filament in 80 hours of time to make the giant one because the Ender 2 told me it was worth doing. So even if you if you decide not to stay in 3D printing, you've only wasted $163. If you decide to stay in 3D printing, you've wasted nothing because it's a fantastic companion that does phenomenally excellent prints. It's not like buying, you know, uh, a low-end, low-quality, low-resolution printer that now that you've decided you're into 3D printing, it's like, I don't want to use that printer anymore because the print results aren't very good. These things make great print results. And it's made by the same company that makes the CR-10, using the same technology as the CR-10. It's using the exact same hot end and nozzle, the exact same carriage design, the exact same V-rails and V-wheels. It's using all the same tech that's in the CR-10. It is literally a 6x6x9 micro CR-10. That's actually even better than the CR-10 as far as resolution goes, you know, as far as getting rid of those ringing and stuff like that. That's not a fault of the CR-10, that's a nature of a large printer. When you have a printer that big, you've you got to slow down. It's as simple as that. You're throwing all that mass around, you just got to slow down. But um, I say do it. If you want to get into 3D printing, grab yourself an Ender 2. It's 163 bucks on GearBest, you can't beat that. Even the regular price is only 200 bucks. There are, besides an ANA A8, which is a kit that takes forever and you got to print $100 worth of parts to really get anything good out of it, um, you're not, you can't touch a printer for cheaper. Matter of fact, the only printer I'm aware of that will be similar in price and similar in quality isn't available yet. I actually did the Kickstarter for it, so I'm waiting for it to come. It should be here this month, actually. Is the, um, the new Micro Delta from... Um, who makes it? The Micro Delta, oh, Monoprice. The Micro Delta Monoprice is putting out. Fully assembled, you don't have to do anything, auto bed leveling, you just load film and hit go. And it makes prints this good. But, very, very tiny print volume. Yeah, it's, it's like half, like a third the print volume of the Ender 2. Because first it's a circle, and it's only 120 millimeters tall. So very, very small parts. But I hear that the results I'm seeing from people who've gotten early release models look amazing. So it'll be nice for taking with me to rocket launches to crank out, you know, oh, I need an extra 29mm motor mount retainer so I can crank that out. An extra centering ring, okay, up to 3 inches I can crank that out. Um, plus it'll be cool. It was only $169 on the Kickstarter, so you're talking about a $200 Micro Delta. But this, you can buy now at equal or greater quality with a much bigger print volume. It doesn't have auto leveling, but once you replace those springs, you don't need auto leveling. It holds. I've, I haven't had to re-level this in several days now since I, since I replaced the springs. I have not had to adjust the level. It just stays. It just does what it's supposed to do now. I think the aluminum bed is slightly bent because I have a little low spot right here, um, two thirds of the way across the front there, where it dips down a little bit. So I think the easier solution would be simply to move my part to a different part of the bed. That's when I do the sequential printing. When doing one big print, it's not a problem. It's only when I do the sequential prints. But, um, yeah, they complement each other. They're, they're great. Um, I mean, yeah, I, don't get me wrong. I benefit from you clicking on these links and buying the printers. Um, hopefully I don't get in trouble for this, but I think I get like 20 bucks every time you buy a CR-10. Something like that. I think it's like $17 or something like that. It's like, whatever, I don't care. Uh, the $17 isn't that big a deal. I sold four of them. What's the big deal is that if I sell you printers you like, they'll keep sending me more printers, and that's important to me and making you happy is important to me because if you're not happy, you're going to unsubscribe. You're not going to use my links. I mean, I mean, sure, you can burn an audience and say, oh, go buy all this stuff, and they do it, but then once you burn them, they're never going to come back. You know, so I use these printers every day. I have two CR-10s, I have three Ender 2s, and they are amazing. I had a power supply burnout on the Ender 2. Apparently that is a common thing where every now and then you'll get one. The, power, the other two are fine, but the one, the power supply burned out. I bought an Xbox 360 non-slim power supply for $21 on Amazon. It's perfect. People have already, that's, I got it all online. People mod those to do um, power the Ender 2. So that's what I did. I bought a, I haven't modified it yet, but I bought a um, 
Xbox 360, not the slim version, the original version, one that goes like 16, 17 amps. I bought that power supply and they gave instructions for how to mod it to um, make it put out the power for the end or two. And there you go, done. $21 on Amazon, I'm happy. And it's probably a better power supply anyway. But yeah, enjoy. I'll be back with more videos. I'll be back with more prints. Hopefully you will like, hopefully the the modifications of the CR10 to make it an all-in-one unit will work because that would allow me to fit a lot more printers on the table, which would be cool. Because like I could fit, I could fit four Ender four, Ender twos right here on the end of my desk. It's incredible. Let me have show you. Like you see, I got this one here, that one there. I can put another one here and another one there. It, it, it's it's they they take up so little space. They're very cool. So if I can make the CR10s and the Ana E10s take up less space, that would be very cool. And um, go from there. You guys have a great night. I hope you enjoy the video. Thank you for watching.